Hello, my name is Reese Hunter and I'm going to teach you how to set up your own NFT minting website on Solana. I've made a tutorial just like this before, but since then Metaplex has changed, requiring an updated guide. The reason you might need your own minting website is because minting a bunch of NFTs can get really pricey. It's much cheaper on the Solana network, which is what we're going to be dealing with today, but even then, if you're minting collections of 10,000 NFTs, it can get pretty pricey. So with this website, you're not going to have to pay any minting fees because your customers are going to do it for you. Also, I wanted to let you guys know that I'm an NFT artist and I'm going to be releasing my own collection very soon. So if you have any interest in that at all, I'm going to leave the links to my Twitter, Instagram, and Discord server in the description of this video. So you should definitely check out those links to stay up to date with my project. Okay, that's enough talk, now let's get into how to create your very own NFT minting website. Alright, so the first thing you need to do is install two things, Visual Studio Code and Node.js. For both of these downloads, I'll leave the links in the description of this video. So choose whatever operating system you're on and download it. And once you've downloaded Visual Studio Code, then download Node.js. Once you've done that, go ahead and open Visual Studio Code and you'll see a screen just like this. Go to File, Open Folder, and navigate to your desktop and select Folder. Now you'll see a screen like this. What you're going to want to do is go to Terminal, New Terminal, and that'll open up this window here. Now what you need to do is go to this GitHub page, I'll leave the link in the description, and go to code and copy the link right here. Now open up Visual Studio Code again, and in this terminal that we opened, type npm install git. Once that's done running, we're going to type git clone, and then paste in the link that we just copied. Once that's done, you'll now have a folder called Metaplex on your desktop. So what we're going to do is go to file, open folder, Go back to your desktop and find the Metaplex folder. Open it and click Select Folder. So now we are in the Metaplex directory and we can get started. Go up to Terminal, New Terminal. And now in here we're going to type npm install dash g ts dash node. Hit enter and it will download. So now we need to install the Solana command line tool. So head over to this website, I'll leave the link in the description. And if you're on Mac or Linux, you'll copy this command. And if you're on Windows, you'll copy this command. So I'm on Windows, so I'm going to copy this one. And then you're going to paste it in this terminal. And then once that's done, you're going to copy the second one and paste it in here again. Once that's done, you can type Solana dash dash version to see if it was successfully installed. And it was. So now that we have Solana installed, what we need to do is change our URL to either be on the devnet or the mainnet. So to do this, we're going to type Solana config set dash dash URL. And then we're going to type in the link to devnet.solana.com. Now, since I want my project to be on devnet for testing purposes, I'm gonna make this say devnet, but if you want to be on the mainnet, then you'll make it say mainnet-beta. So I'm gonna change mine back to devnet since I'm just doing this for testing purposes and hit enter. So now we can see our URL is pointing to the devnet. Now we need to create a wallet for this project. So we're gonna type Solana dash keygen new dash dash out file and then just type in this path hit enter and now it'll ask you to make a password so just type in whatever you want confirm it so now this is the address to our wallet it's called the pub key so i'm going to go ahead and copy it then i'm going to go ahead and right click right here create a new file call it important and i'm going to paste the pub key in here also right here, it'll show your secret phrase to recover your account, so I highly recommend copying that down somewhere as well. So what we just created is called a key pair, so now we want to make sure that that key pair is going to be our default. So you're going to type solana config set dash dash key pair, and then type in the exact same path that you just created it on. So it'll be config solana devnet test.json. And now as we can see here, our key pair path is the path to that. So now what we can do is actually check the balance of our wallet by typing Solana balance. And you can see that we have zero soul. Since we're on the devnet, we can just type Solana airdrop one and it'll give us one soul. So we need to do this in order to get our project up and running. But if you're on the main net, then what you're going to need to do is actually send money to this wallet from a different wallet. So since we're on the devnet, we were able to just airdrop fake soul to our account. But if you're on the main net, you will need to use your real wallet to send money to this one. Now what we need to do is create a folder that's going to store our pictures for our NFTs and the JSON files. So right click here, hit new folder and type assets, and then go ahead and drag all the images you want to upload into that folder. 
Notice how my images are named 0 and 1. It's important here that you start with 0 and then count all the way up for however many images you want. So now we need to insert the JSON files. If you don't have these, then you're going to need to create a new file, call it 0.json, and create another one and call it 1.json, because for each picture, we need a JSON file to go with it. Now I actually have a video about generating NFTs with the JSON file metadata included. So if you follow that guide, then you're just gonna drag all the JSON files and all the PNGs into this folder. But if you're not following that guide and you're making the JSON files manually, then you're gonna go to this website. I'll leave the link in the description. Scroll down to the JSON structure and we're gonna copy this entire thing and then go to zero.json and paste it in. So the name here will be whatever you want to name this NFT. So I'm just gonna call it NFT zero. The description will be the description of the project. Seller fee basis points is gonna be the royalties that you will get for each sale. So if you were to put 250, that would be 2.5%. If you put 500, that would be 5% and so on. So I want mine to be 2.5%, so I'm gonna make it that. For image, we're just gonna change this to be image.png. Since when we upload these, it'll automatically change image.png to be whatever the corresponding PNG actually is. And then we can delete both of these. And for attributes, this is really important. So as we can see, 0.png, it has a cheese hat, it has a mask, it has a suit, and a banana. So these will be all of the attributes. So for hat, it will be cheese. For its outfit, it will be suit. For its mouth, that will be a mask. And we've run out, so what I'm just gonna do is copy this and paste it on the bottom here. So now we have one more. And then the item it's holding is a banana. You can make as many attributes as you need for your project. Now the collection will be the name of the collection, so make sure you name it whatever you want your collection to be named. I'll just call it NFT collection for the sake of this video. And then the family is what holds collections. So you can have multiple collections in one family. So I'll just name mine NFT, you can name it whatever you want. Now for these files, we're gonna change this to be image.png, and then we're gonna go ahead and delete these and that comma. Change the category to image, and now we're getting into creators. This determines who gets shares of the royalties. So right now there's only one creator who gets 100% of the share. If I wanted two creators, then I could copy that, put a comma, and paste it in here. And then I could put the wallet address of the second creator here. And then I'd also change these to be 50, so that both creators get a 50-50 split of the royalties. Since I'm the only creator, I'm just gonna delete that and I'm going to copy my wallet and paste it in there. So now I will get 100% of the royalties to this wallet. And that's it for the JSON file. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the entire thing. And now we have to do it for the second image. The only thing that I'm gonna change is this will be NFT one instead of NFT zero. And as you can see, this picture actually has different properties than the other one. So this one has a top hat, buck teeth, and no clothes and a hammer. So we're gonna change this top hat, no outfit, buck teeth, and a hammer. And now we're done with this one too. And now we're done with all the JSON files. And once that's done, you're gonna type cdjs and then yarn build. Then you're gonna type cdjs, type yarn install, Okay, it's finally done doing that. That took like 15 minutes, could take shorter or longer for you. So now we're gonna do yarn bootstrap. Once that's done, I'm gonna copy this path up to Metaplex and then do CD and then paste it so we're back in the Metaplex directory. Now I'm gonna type ts-node js slash packages slash cli slash src slash candy machine cli dot ts upload dot slash assets dash dash env devnet. If you are doing this for the mainnet, then you're gonna make it say mainnet dash beta. But since mine is on devnet, it will say devnet. And then do dash dash key pair, and then put in the path to your key pair. If you're following the guide exactly, then this will be yours. Now just hit enter. Now you can see everything was successful. Here you see it says initialized config for candy machine with public key this. So we're gonna copy that candy machine with public key and we're going to paste it in here because we probably are going to need it later. Also, we will now see a folder called dot cache. So if you open that and open the file that's in there, you will see this. So this is important. So we're going to select the entire thing, copy it, 
and paste it into our important file. Now this is cool because if you go over to this link here and paste it into a web browser, you'll be taken to this website on Arweave. And Arweave is what permanently stores the data for our NFT. And then if we go to this link, which is the image, then we will see the image for our NFT is stored here. Now the other important thing here is the config, which is this. We've already copied it down here, so we don't really need this, but we're gonna keep it all here just in case. Now what we need to do is create our candy machine. So we're gonna run a similar command to this, except instead of putting upload in the assets folder, we're gonna do create underscore candy underscore machine. And then at the end, we're gonna add dash dash price, and this will be the price in soul that you want each NFT to be. So I'm just gonna make mine one soul per NFT, and then you can hit enter. All right, now it is finished. Now this is important. We need to copy candy machine pub key and paste it into our important file because we're gonna need this later. Now we're gonna run a similar command again, but we're gonna delete the price and we're gonna delete the environment devnet and we're gonna change create candy machine to update candy machine. And then at the end, we're gonna add dash dash date. And then here you're gonna set the date that you want your NFTs to be able to be minted. Since I want mine to be able to be minted right away, I'm just gonna set a date that has already passed. So I'm gonna do 3rd of October, 2021, then zero, 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 and then PST since that's my local time. If yours is different, you can do GMT or EST or whatever your time zone is. Make sure you've copied this down exactly correct and then hit enter. And once it's done, you're gonna copy this timestamp number, this is important, and paste it into our important file. Now what we're gonna do is clone another GitHub repository. So I'm gonna copy this path to get back to my desktop and then do CD and paste it in. So now we're back at the desktop and I'm gonna go to this GitHub page, go to code, copy the link and back in Visual Studio Code, I'm gonna type git clone and paste the link in there. Once that's done running, you will now have a folder on your desktop called Candy Machine Mint. So we're gonna go up to File, Open Folder, locate the Candy Machine Mint folder, and then Select Folder. Now, as you can see, we are in the Candy Machine Mint folder. So we're gonna go to Terminal, open up a new terminal, and we're gonna type yarn install. Once that's done, you're gonna type yarn build. Once that's done, we now have to locate our .env.example file, right click it, hit rename, and we're gonna remove dot example so the file is just called dot env hit enter and now open that up as you can see we will have a bunch of variables with placeholders so this is where all of the important information in this important file in the metaplex folder is going to go so for the first one react app candy machine config that will be this candy machine with public key file or this config right here so go ahead and copy that and paste it in here now the second one, React App Candy Machine ID, will be this Candy Machine pub key, so copy that and paste it in here. The third one, React App Treasury Address, will be the pub key for your Solana wallet that we created, which is also the address for the key pair. And the React App Candy Start Date will be this timestamp, so copy that and paste it in. Now for these two, if you want to stay on DevNet, then you'll just leave these as they are. But if you want to be on Mainnet, then you'll replace this with mainnet-beta, and you replace this with mainnet-beta. But since I'm keeping mine on devnet, I'm just gonna undo that, and save it, and we're done with this. Now, all you have to do is start it up. So type yarn start, and wait for it to start up. And once you see a screen just like this, then it's done. So what you're gonna do now is copy this link, open up a new tab, paste in that link, and as you can see, this is our website. So if you go and connect your wallet, type in your password. Now you can see everything is working beautifully. So there are two total available NFTs to be minted. Zero have been redeemed, which means there's two remaining. So now if we hit mint, approve the transaction, it's gonna load for a minute here. And congratulations, mint succeeded, there we go. So now if we go ahead and open our wallet and then go into the settings and change network 
and put it on DevNet. You'll keep it on mainnet if you've been doing mainnet this entire time, but I've been doing DevNet. So I'm gonna switch it to DevNet. As you can see here, NFT zero. This is the one we just created. It has all the properties. It has the description. It has everything. And we can see here that now it says I've redeemed one and there's still one remaining. So if I go ahead and mint another one, approve the transaction, there we go, mint succeeded, and now it's sold out. There are zero remaining, and it's not gonna let me mint any more. And just to show you guys, this one is also in my wallet. Right here, we can see NFT1 has the properties and the description we set. Also, there's one last thing. If you wanna customize this website with HTML, you can do so in the Candy Machine Mint folder. If you go open public, and open the index.html file. Here you can edit the HTML to this web page. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I really hope I was able to help you out in one way or another. And if I was able to, then consider liking and subscribing so that I know to keep making content. Also, remember to check out my Twitter, Instagram, and Discord links in the description of this video. And I will hopefully see you guys in another video.